my perception of Brixton was that, was that it was a place that was dangerous. You know, it's, it's, I, suppose it's, I suppose I was also thinking that here's a ghetto. And I don't mean that in any derogatory way. I'm just saying a ghetto can be a place where people together feel safe. And really, it's, it was an int I mean, suppose the whole, I mean, it makes me think of social engineering and all the rest of it, where you kind of get people together because you can deal with them better together. And actually, what they need is freedom, not, not ghettoing, what, ghettoization. They don't need that. What they need is opportunity. Um, and so my perception from Streatham about what was going on at Brixton was that, uh, was that it's not, it, well, all I can think of that, that right now is that it was the place where I wasn't. I think I was in Streatham during the Brixton riots. And I, and I felt, I think if I'm honest, I felt, well, I'm, you know, this is, a, this is a safe place to be, Streatham. I think, I think I remember, I remember watching the, the television footage, the film footage. It was, it was live hot news at the time. I remember seeing images of buildings on fire and people, you know, quite an immense amount of violence at, at the same time, lots of violence. And it was quite clear who was, who were the antagonists and the protagonists? It was quite clear who was fighting for, for, on what side. Why people were fighting as they were and why people were so angry, I think is something that really um, history has taught me. Black people from the West Indies came over because there was a need to be met after the war for, for bus drivers and tube drivers and we were short of the kind of labor that could be provided. But if you keep people in providing the sort of labor that can be provided and you don't offer them genuinely the opportunity, the social, educational, spiritual opportunities that people need to grow and develop, then they, you won't get the kind of cohesion that the government longs for now. And I think the government is having to work very hard, I think, at, at restoring a vision of what social cohesion might be like. Very hard indeed. I think the Brixton riots were the kind of, were the end of a long fuse, you know, and suddenly it all blew up there and, and just came out. I mean, you can understand that too. You can understand why people, I don't, I don't agree with violence. I mean, I'm not a violent person. I, I'm passionately against violence. But you can understand why people, if there's no other way open to them to, to, to be represented and have a sense of their own dignity and their place in society and in communities, that then people, then people find the next best way. If people will not listen and act, there's too much listening that goes on, really, and not enough acting. It's listening is the big word. Well, actually, listening and acting are the same. Uh, I've got to be part, of the, part and parcel of the same kind of package that's delivered. I, I think people get frustrated. Frustration, if it's not properly channeled, boils over into, into the kind of violence that blew up in, in, the, in the Brixton riots. I'm, I'm not an expert on the Brixton riots. There were, there were clergy, God bless them, who were far more deeply involved in, in the Brixton riots. But I remember sitting in Streatham thinking, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. And, and, and something has got to change in order for that not to happen again. Those who came over on the Windrush, of course, um, from the West Indies uh, in the 40s and 50s, of course, were, found themselves housed in the deep shelter just down on Clapham South here, uh, which is a very deep, very deep shelter, very deep structure. Um, so as soon as people come here, the first message we give to them is, you know, here's a whole, you know, this, and this, is where, this is where you belong, or here are the worst parts of the country where the housing isn't so good, that's where, you, that's, where you can, that's where you can live. And I think that the church, to its shame, still lives with a legacy. Although it's a legacy that's being repaired, a legacy of rejection. And just being honest about that and facing up to that and being straightforward about that, I think, is, is, really, is really important. The church had its own very messy history in the history of, of slavery. Um, you know, bishops owning plantations and and slaves and all the rest of it. I mean, what was going on? Who did we think we were? You know, who did we think we were to be able to, 
to p treat people in such a cavalier fashion. They didn't get at the, the idea that, you know, when you're in Christ, there's a new creation. Things are different, so you have to act differently, and you have to believe differently, and you have to belong differently.